Ah, response video on the anti-natalism subject. Yeah, it's just never... <clears throat> it's the last subject, I think. It's the ultimate subject. It's the only subject, really. Uh, you know, the rest of it is just uh, arranging deck chairs on the Titanic. <laughs> this is... This is talking about doing something practical about being on the Titanic. Um, so anyway, Fred has made a contribution. I do want to address some asshole, made some comment about hunting. I blocked him. I blocked you, asshole. Um, there was some sort of contradiction in my last video, or the one before that, um, where I talked about the deer hunting. There's no contradiction. I want deer exterminated. Not for someone's entertainment, not for their recreation. No, I want them methodically exterminated, all right, either through chemical birth control or, yeah, one-time complete uh, culling, a last culling, a final culling. Um, you know, the hunters now kill 60,000 deer in this state, 60,000, one-third of the population every year. Uh, deers are just being farmed. They're basically farm animals with no rights. A cow has more rights than a deer. You can't shoot cows with a bow and arrow. Uh, it's just sadistic bullshit. The hunters have had 12 years where they've had fish and game has had control of this problem. And in those 12 years, the deer population has increased because it's to the deer hunter's advantage. They like recreational hunting, bug. Interesting little one. Anyway, um, and that all, that's all it is. It's just a, they're just exploiting the circumstance, keeping the population high, so they can all, you know, sit basically, put a couch up in a tree, drink some beers, and uh, shoot arrows into little innocent creatures. Fuck the hunters, fuck you. Um, I hope you get hunted. I, I can only wish it on you, that you are alien prey someday. Uh, stalked, slowly, methodically tortured. Um, so anyway. <laughs> uh, let's see. Drain life regarding irresponsibility. Hmm. Drain. Why would I say drain? Drain life regarding irresponsibility to stop procreating. Ugh, yeah, I wrote this really sloppy. Um, alright, Fred. Uh, what the hell? Vest building? Oh, nest building. Alright, so anyway, Fred's last video. Yeah, he sort of got to this issue of, um, you know, when he thinks anti-natalism is appropriate, which I find kind of irritating. Like, oh yeah, if the fetus is horribly deformed, well, then it's imposing to force life on it. I mean, come on. Just misses the whole point. Um, no, of course, yeah. That makes it, that's the obvious ones, right? Those are obvious. But the point is, is what's the imposition in the first place? Why do you have a right to roll these dice in the first place? And why do you get to decide what snake eyes look like? Maybe I think a three is the same as snake eyes. Maybe I think a four is inadequate. Maybe a five is inadequate. Maybe I only think, if unless you can roll boxcars... I don't want you rolling dice with my destiny. Fuck that shit. Mind your own business. Roll dice with your own balls and brain. Uh, keep me the fuck out of it again. So I think you're sort of avoiding the real subject. But fine, um, as a peripheral subject, uh, you know, it's worth noting uh, that even the un-antinatalists do have uh, conditions they put on what they think is an acceptable harm, an acceptable risk, an acceptable imposition. And that's really the key word here, is acceptable imposition. They're all impositions, all right? You're just now qualifying when the imposition is acceptable. So you're basically saying something like, let's say we're arguing, we're zookeepers, and we're arguing about whether we should have panthers, okay? Because one in 17 of the Panthers goes completely insane. Uh, you know, it ends up pacing back and forth and eating its own tail off. Uh, and we're going to argue about, well, it's really nice to have the Panthers, though. So, you know, it's only a 1 in 17 risk. So, uh, yeah, should we do it or shouldn't we do it? And I'm going to argue, as one of the zookeepers, just make a plastic Panther. Fuck this bullshit. 
Uh, you don't have any right to impose insanity on a panther. Fuck you. And the other asshole will say, Oh, but it makes the little children smile. And then I'll say, That's just propaganda, you dumbass. Fuck you. And then I'll say, Then he'll say something like, But people pay money to see them. And then I'll just punch him in the fucking goddamn face, pull his eyeballs out and eat him. Argument over. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's just bullshit. I mean, you know, you get to decide what happens to me. I mean, it's just, it's just bullshit on its face. So that you have to deal with first. It's not for you to decide what risks are worth taking with somebody else. If I was your son, what would you say to me? I'd say, I go to you, Fred, I'd say, hey, Dad, you know what? Fuck you. What the fuck were you thinking, you dumb moron? I mean, what, was your ego really that fucking big? Uh, well, what the hell's the point? You know, I mean, you'll, you'll even use the word conditional, I think. Uh, compromises. Let's see. To a compromised world. Yeah, see, you even use the word compromise, like a fetus that's compromised. Well, it's a compromised world, Fred. Incredibly compromised. This world is fucking as cripply and disgusting and drooly as it could get. So, right there, you already fail. But anyway, you're not going to be able to give me a refund. You're just going to say something like, Well, sorry, lad. Tough shit. <laughs> you know? No refunds available. And uh, that's it. You're, you're just going to declare bankruptcy and say, Yep, uh, well, too bad. Sorry. 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 Yeah, I'm sincerely sorry, lad. Well, <laughs> that's not going to fix the problem. That's not going to undo my dilemma. I now have to live in a world where I have to be subservient to preventing the next Titanic. I have to try to stop these assholes from rebuilding this piece of shit. <laughs> and then building it wrong again. And then building it wrong again. And then building it wrong again. <laughs> and so you've basically sentenced me not only to my own personal unpleasantness that I'll have to endure, but I'll have to also endure the unpleasantness of the obligation to try to stop another asshole like you from launching another Titanic. I mean, fuck. And like I said, so where's my refund? Where's, where's, where's the insurance policy that covers this? So this is just like somebody, this isn't just drunk driving. This is driving without insurance. So you just plow into my car. You've got no insurance. You break my back. And uh, so I'm fucked. Because you were irresponsible. Because you really can't pay the bill. And even when you were talking about this compromise kid thing, you know, the, it's not, you know, the parents are being responsible and all this shit. We know that's not how this game works. There's a huge public subsidy for these compromised people. Uh, you know, in this town, uh, you know, for eight crippled kids, I'm sorry, wrong word, for eight um, happy incapable, or whatever the fuck they are, uh, they, they spend $696,000 a year. I mean, what the hell is that? To, to educate them, right? To force them to go to school. Does it make any sense? No. Is it preposterous nonsense? Yes. Is that six hundred and seventy or $89,000 could it do a hell of a lot of good in the world? Yes. Uh, it's just idiotic. We've been subsidizing this whole birth thing. You know, uh, if you have two kids, uh, you're getting $30,000 of other people's money to educate them. And then we haven't even gotten to health care. And on another maybe 20 grand a year, being forked out by everybody else to subsidize your reproductive choices. Why the fuck should your reproductive choices impact me? Even if I wasn't an anti nihilist I'd find it offensive that I have to subsidize your decision uh, to, to have babies? Why the fuck is that my problem? <sighs> Fucker. <laughs> Fuckers. Sorry, I wasn't talking to you specifically. Um, so anyway, what other points do I need to get to? So anyway, yeah, what, what percentages are, are okay with you? You know, how compromised does things have to be? I think that kind of argument's okay, but the bottom line argument is deal with the imposition. Not, not some kind of line you're going to draw and say, there's such a thing as an acceptable imposition and an unacceptable imposition. Well, that's a bit of a word game, isn't it? There's worse impositions, <laughs> that's for sure. But it's an imposition is an imposition. You're still in negative territory. There's no such thing 
as a good imposition. Sorry, that fails. And that's the antinatalist argument. Uh, that even if things come out perfectly okay for you individually, we know that's not how it works in the real world. So it is fail. And uh, this is all just a cheat. And again, this testimony of the, the average impositionite. I think the average Frankenstein falls for the trap and uh, he plays along. You know, he says, oh, well, okay, I'm Frankenstein, everybody hates me, I'm neurotically afraid of fire, I'm totally ugly, uh, but, yeah, you know, I can still jerk off, so it's all good. Um, you know, he comes up with some rationalization, uh, you know, make me a girl now, will you, doctor? And he just plays along, gets sucked in, and gets brainwashed to think he's accomplishing something. That well, doesn't prove anything. It doesn't prove his life is worth living because Frankenstein is too stupid to figure out he's a victim. Well, that's Frankenstein's problem. <laughs> you know, a, it's not a truth. You know, this, this uh, taking a, a survey of public opinion doesn't really mean a hell of a lot in answering these kinds of questions. Um, because we know that people are controlled by propaganda. I mean, what, are you going to do some sort of truth survey in Iran? <laughs> you know, you're going to find out the truth by asking the public in Iran what the truth is? I don't think so. Alright. Um, let's see. What the fuck? Elemental facts. I wonder why I put that down. He must have said something. Confinement. Ah, oh, emotional. Yeah, okay, the fact of this whole emotional thing, I kind of brought it up a little bit in the last video before last. Um, that, yeah, we're emotional animals, so yeah, a lot of these decisions, we're not going to be able to act on them because we're completely owned by love or attachments, and we're not going to be able to be fair, we're not going to be able to do a lot of things. But when it comes to the serious questions, and when you're all putting your little philosophical hat on, when you're going to claim to be logical, and disciplined and rational, uh, yeah, then that emotional crap really has to go. You can't uh, run away from the truth because it's emotionally unpleasant. Uh, and uh, that just seems like a, a, just a, an obvious obligation. There's really no, I mean, like I said, it's, human beings are super fail if they can never, you know, be Vulcan. You know, if they always got to be owned by their taste for chocolate or something. Um, all right, we're getting there. Let's see, the expenses, social. Yeah, I sort of covered that already. Uh, I think imposing unnecessarily. Yeah, so it's just this whole definition you have um, of what is unnecessary. <laughs> you know, and the argument is, I think, just too easily made. There's no necessity to your decision to have children. None whatsoever. Um, it's completely a personal indulgence. Nothing else. There was no rational imperative that compelled you. There was no, I must save the universe and do the right thing. There was no, there was nothing. There was only a personal impulse uh, that has no rational credibility. If it has any any origin, I would argue it's 99% culturally imposed, and maybe there's a 1% uh, innate genetic thing. But I think that's mostly regarding women and their need to take care of something. But that can be supplemented, as has been demonstrated. Uh, you know, there's about a million, well, it's more than that, there's about a billion lap dogs in the world now <laughs> because, you know, women have found something to take care of and they can feed it turkey and, you know, clean poop off its butt and, uh, you know, they can have something to take care of and that's all they need. So that uh, impulse to be a caregiver can be satisfied in other ways besides imposing on me. <sighs> Damn bastards. Uh, imposing based on the premise that your progeny 
will be as deluded as you into thinking you're accomplishing something and that the price is worth paying. That's what it all comes down to. Uh, you're living a delusion of purpose, a delusion of efficiency, and a delusion of potentiality. Uh, it's all made out of shit. We are just scheming maggots, uh, and the whole maggot uh, paradigm is stupid. <laughs> Mouth, ass, you know, potential penis vagina scenario. Yeah, it really isn't worth the price paid for it. Uh, it's all soap opera, and it's a play that's run for um, four billion years. Well, okay, 500 million anyway. This play has been running for 500 million years. It's time we close it down. <laughs> it's got more moldy hair on it than cats. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's, uh, it's been there, done that. Been there, done that. Been there, done that. Fucking goddamn horsefly again. Been there, done that. Anyway. So, it's good seeing you, Fred. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, you're, you're taking a, a slow, disciplined approach here. But I think you are stepping into some, some fudginess. You know, by uh, splitting the hair of the imposition word. And coming up with this jargon of acceptable and unacceptable. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's an imposition. Imposition is imposition. And it's only acceptable if the imposition prevents a greater imposition. <laughs> yeah, as ironic as that is, we're right back to the negative number equation. A suffering is only worthy of imposing if it prevents a greater suffering. So anyway, till next time, and such. I have a marginal day, but whatever. Having a marginal start to it. Well, it's already in the middle. I'm just, I just keep getting further behind every day. Seem to be walking at a good pace, <laughs> but the treadmill is getting away from me. Anyway. Till the next time, and such, and so forth, and whatnot. I was just waiting until I got to the open area. It's nice out here. <sighs> anyway, till the next time. I know I said that three times, but... <sighs> it's better than saying, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, it's a better salutation than fuck you. So I think I'll go with it. So, till the next time.